Welcome to Great Things Tampa Bay, the podcast about great eats, great places, and great people in the greater Tampa Bay area. I'm your host, Kyle Sasser, a Tampa Bay native, realtor, and a pretty good guy, I, I like to think, on occasion. I'm joined here by my lovely and beautiful wife, Abby. Hi. If you tuned into episode nine, uh, she, she made an appearance over there, and I managed to convince her to come on to episode 10 as well. It's, you know, 10's a big number, right? It is. Yep. I'm proud of you been doing this for a few months so thank you for uh taking us along on your commute to work i know the new game of thrones season uh just started so i do appreciate you taking some time out of your day to give us a listen instead of uh you know talking about all the madness that is game of thrones i'd also like for you to come talk to us on social media you can go to our website greatthingstv.com and there is a get social link at the top and there we have our great things tampa bay discussion group on facebook we're over 500 people currently so so jump on there, throw up some recommendations. You'll actually have a place to post all those pictures you take of your meals. <laughs> so we would love for you to share it with us. And also, just like episode nine, we do have our new voicemail line. So you can just call us up at 727-440-4455 and just uh, leave us a voicemail. It can be good or bad, happy or sad. We like hearing from you. So give us a call. Segment one, William Dean Chocolates. This past Saturday, Abby and I, we went to William Dean Chocolates, which is located up at 2790 West Bay Drive in Bel Air Bluffs. And it's on the corner of Indian Rocks and West Bay. What's that restaurant you love that's up there? e and Steakout Grill. Yeah, it's, a, it's across the street from E&E. So yeah, so how did you find out about William Dean Chocolates? A girlfriend of mine actually gave them to me as a gift a few years back. And when I opened them up, they were in beautiful packaging and the most beautiful, interesting chocolates when I opened them up. I thought they were so delicious and I had to learn more about where these were from. And since my husband is a dessert lover and chocoholic, Guilty. <laughs> I sometimes um, will buy him nice boxes of chocolates. So because I enjoyed them so much, as I'm not necessarily a sweets person, I decided to go back and buy some for Kyle. Let's pause for a second. What's what you what you <laughs> chewing up in there? <laughs> so yeah, the dog's trying to help us file away some papers. So the designs on these things are awesome. They're like green with swirls. Some are like purple with like airbrushed paisley designs on them. They're wild. They're just fluorescent colors. They're so interesting, and actually, they're famous at Liam Dean for um, not just their deliciousness, but also the fact that they were in Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. Yep, so yeah, so the lady with the crazy headdresses and the, the makeup and all that stuff, they were fans of William Dean. Don't hold that against them. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's a special place, you know, and it's kind of our own local artisan chocolatier. Uh, can't recommend them enough, but they do offer classes as well, which is what we went and did on Saturday. So we did the laminated dough. And for those who don't know, laminated doughs are going to be used for croissants, sticky buns. What else did we have there? Kuglamon. That that thing that I can't <laughs> <French> pronounce. <laughs> yep. Uh, penny chocolat, which is basically chocolate inside of a croissant. Which, yeah, my mm -hmm. personal favorite. And almond croissants. Almond croissants, and they also did some savory stuff with uh, some Parmesan and some... The cat is not doing the proper. <laughs> Amateur hour. And they also did some savory things with it as well, with the dough as well as a puff pastry. You know, the cheeses, they had like some pecorino they had in there. Pecorino Romano and a Parmesan. Mm -hmm. They had fresh herbs. With some herbs, it's delicious. They did it as an elephant ear and also a, like a breadstick. So we went there and learned sort of how to do that. We didn't get too hands-on with it. We were just kind of sitting back and watching, to be honest. It's a lot of work, but we're looking forward to giving it a try. Basically, you make the dough. Yeah, of course, I'm absolutely simplifying this because this is a multi-hour process with, you know, letting it rest and rolling it out and all this good stuff. But basically, you take the dough and you wrap that dough around some butter and then you roll it and fold it and roll it and fold it until you have like 47 layers, I think they said. No, that's, in that's inaccurate. <laughs> Can you explain that? No, nope, we're leaving horribly. it in. We're leaving it in. No. All right. Well, you go. Okay. You take a shot. <laughs> I don't think you need to give him a baking class. And laminated dough is not used. 
it for it's the puff pastry it's different puff pastry is a little bit different because it does not have fat in it yes it does not have the butter no it does have the butter in it oh it doesn't have the yeast in it it doesn't that's have right. the yeast that's in right. it and they swore up and down much like every other chef and restaurant tour that it's not worth making your own puff pastry just go buy it at the store yeah. however if you want a very good croissant it is worth yes. your time and you're going to take a lot of time making it and you're going to have to do it a lot of times because the only way you get better at it is by repetition so you have to really want to learn how to make a croissant if you really want a tasty one yep. and let me tell you tasting a good croissant will change the way you view them in general yeah and it's worlds 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 different from like Publix or anything you get locally these things are amazing <laughs> yes even from a lot of places a lot of places even Local bakeries don't always do them correctly. Just because it's made there doesn't mean it's made right. Yeah. So and it just depends on the chef and their training and how skilled they are. And it's because, you know, it's just, it's a long process to get it right. And on the plus side, once you do get it down, you can make a ton of them and they freeze up really nice. Yes. And then you can just pull them out, proof them, and then throw them in the oven. As needed. And bake them. Besides the laminated dough, they also offer donuts, cake decorating, eclairs, Macaroons, gelato, they had a cake class that they were talking about. They also have a confections class. And part so part of the class that we went to, they actually present you with uh, a lot of the chocolates and things they make there. And they had the gummy, you know, you say gummy and you're like, yeah. but it was, it was marvelous. It, really was. <laughs> it was marvelous. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. You can buy some sweets for your sweetheart up at William Dean Chocolates. And William Dean was there, he gave us a little chat during the class and uh, chef tim brown was the one who walked us through the entire process the class was what, multi hour it was like four and a half hours yeah. very in depth very in depth yeah. and you know when you walk in there there's a little storefront and there'll be like the beautiful glass display with all the chocolates i mean it's really something just to look at and then there are gelatos and then you walk around the counter to the back and when you walk in it's the full-on kitchen that you're standing in and he had one of the demonstrations over on one part of the kitchen and they had about 14 to 15 chairs set up and you go in and you sit down and then that's how they kind of begin. So it's kind of cool because you're actually there in the kitchen where they do all of this and it's pretty awesome. You're in the midst of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really beautiful atmosphere. So that's William Dean. They're up a uh, corner of Indian Rocks and West Bay up in Bear Laro Bluffs. So a great stop for your sweetheart or maybe if you're on the way back from the beach or something like or that. Just for yourself. You don't have to have a sweetheart to buy yeah, them. Be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to mention that how I found out about the event and the cooking class was from a Facebook event. And he had several to choose from, as Kyle had mentioned earlier. So if you're interested in any of those classes, log on to Facebook and look at events and look for William Dean. And he should have some upcoming classes. And also he has them on Eventbrite. So you just register through the link. And honestly, for the amount of time that the class was, very affordable. It was very affordable. Yeah. I mean, it, the time. And, and what we walked away with, we walked away we, not only with knowledge and recipes in hand, but also two big, beautiful boxes full of all of the laminated doughs um, he made that day, which were absolutely delicious. Yeah. So we had a box, like six pastries each and some dough to attempt to make something as good as they made. Before that, we had, you know, the chocolates and stuff that they had put out. And then f like four and a half hours of instruction. So yeah, it was, which was amazing. Yeah, ridiculous value. So check it out. Absolutely. Segment two, Bill Jackson's. So segment two here, I thought we would uh, cover one of my favorite stores and Abby's as well. Right? Yeah. We love this place. <laughs> Spent a lot of money there. So yeah, so it's Bill Jackson's and basically they are a outdoor store, I guess you could call it. So anything outdoorsy in the area, the only, th I mean, they will, they will outfit you for, yeah, they will, they will outfit you for whatever you need. So they have camping, backpacking, and not just like the basic, like Coleman stuff. Like they have the ultralight stuff, you know, the, all the fancy backpacks you need, any gear that you need for that trekking poles, boots, shoes, food. We got like a cast iron pan from there, I think. <laughs> or a griddle or something. <laughs> We've gotten many things from there. Maps. They also do scuba. They sell kayaks, stand up paddle boards, fishing, flies. Uh, they also have sell guns and there's a gun range there. Interestingly enough, one of the few places in Florida to actually sell ski equipment. <laughs> so, and they actually had a Visa commercial back in 1987 featuring their indoor ski slope. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yep. So, yeah, so a little history. They opened up in 1946. They started off came back from the war, got married, 
he was stationed at McDill and he went to the auction there and he bought 500 pounds of rat poison and a ton of bleach. And uh, that was the start of the Bill Jackson's empire. How much bleach is a ton of bleach? Actually, the math on this, it comes out to about 264 gallons. That's insane. That's definitely one of those things where you start a business and it ends up somewhere else. Yeah, I have so many questions. Where did he store it? Yeah. How did he divide it up? I'm just, that's just crazy to me. I would never think about yeah, buying right. a ton of bleach <laughs> or that much rat poison for that matter. Just yeah, Do that's it. a, you know, yeah. it, maybe they just had a really big rat problem. I <laughs> um, But I have to tell you, he really turned it into something amazing because that is really one of my favorite stores. So they uh, originally opened up in 1946. Um, they were based around 4th Street for a while, and then in the mid-70s, they bought the five acres up on US-19 and built the Dream Store. So they used Greenstone from Wyoming, Cedar from California, and used Cypress from Florida. It's like you're pulling into a campsite, and one of the stipulations whenever they were building it was that the pine trees and the palmettos had to stay. Which is awesome. Yeah, so it's like you're right on 19 next to all of the car stores and all that stuff, but it's like as soon as you pull in there, you feel like you're in... Campsite in Georgia. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> awesome. it's awesome. So one of their other points of pride is they only hire knowledgeable staff, and uh, they make sure that everyone in each department has a passion for the sport and also a big depth of knowledge. Yeah, and every time we've gone there, they've been so incredibly helpful mm -hmm. and answered all of our questions. Yeah, and they'll even tell you like places to go, like you know if you're looking for a, a place to go hiking locally or you know where the scuba place is. They have a full-on pool for scuba training, testing out kayaks and all this sorts of stuff. It's something to see. It's awesome. <laughs> it's a great place. Whenever I lived in Brandon, I used to love. I would just make the drive just to go there, just to walk around. That's so cool, especially because <laughs> Kyle and I we camp a lot. And I never realized how many things that you can actually buy for camping. Mm -hmm. Just maybe want a lot of things that I'm sure we would never actually use and just end up storing for most of the year. But it's mm -hmm. pretty fantastic to see. Bill Jackson's is basically the Neiman Marcus of camping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that statement. There we go. So, yeah. So, if you have any inkling to do anything outdoors, um, please head on to Bill Jackson's. They are at 9501 U.S. Highway 19, and they're awesome. And if you want to see the uh, Visa commercial from 1987 featuring Bill Jackson's, um, we're going to have that up on the show notes. Go to greatthingstv.com, find episode 10, and uh, we'll have it there. Segment three, let's get personal. This is my wife's favorite segment. <laughs> <laughs> we're 10 episodes in here. It's pretty exciting. I feel like we've hit a little bit of a milestone through the uh, fireworks and champagne. Unfortunately, we can't afford special effects yet, but someday, <laughs> someday. <laughs> um, and honestly, I just want to state a goal for the next 12 months on this, I think. We did miss the Best of the Bay voting for 2017, and there is a category for Best Podcasts. So mark my words, we're going to be in that category next year. And we will win it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, stating my goal, you know, y'all hold me accountable to that and my lovely wife as well. We've hit a little bit of another milestone. Uh, we have 500 people in the discussion group. Which is awesome. Yeah, it's exciting, exciting. So come on over and join us. We're getting you know, some good posts in there. So yeah, I'd love to see what you're eating, what you're doing, where you're going. Segment four, that'll kill you. Thomas Midgley Jr. invented chlorofluorocarbons, uh, also known as CFCs and Freon, and he also invented leaded gasoline. Whenever he was going around promoting gasoline, he would actually huff the gasoline for a minute straight just to prove that it was safe. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. Um, he is, uh, you know, responsible for a lot of problems and misery. Honestly, he was trying to help everybody out with the CFCs and Freon. You know, he was re honestly responsible for refrigeration and propellants and a lot of aerosols, you know, old hairsprays and stuff like that. And leaded gasoline was used widely to prevent knocking. Uh, you know, basically every car used to use it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that put a ton of lead in the air. And, you know, we're still kind of dealing with that a little bit, you know, medically. Because lead never actually leaves your body and it doesn't break down. So it just kind of collects. So anyway, Miss, Mr. Gas Huffer, um, oh, he also contracted polio at the age of 55, which led him, much like his invention of CFCs and leaded gasoline, to get creative, and he created a system of strings and pulleys to help him in and out of bed. But unfortunately, uh, this contraption also eventually strangled him to death. Oh 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, thank you, uh, Mr. Thomas Midgley. You definitely moved moved us along, and then you moved off this mortal coil in uh, a most amusing way. <laughs> That's dark. I know. Outro. So I'd like to thank you for sharing great things Tampa Bay with your friends and family. Um, it's with your support that we're having the success we've had with our uh, discussion group and also uh, just with the listens we've been gathering. And if you're looking for your own great place in Tampa Bay, or maybe you just want to talk about real estate, you can give me a call at 727-300-2111. Or you're welcome to send me an email at kyle at sassergroup.com. That's K-Y-L-E at S-A-S-S-E-R-G-R-O-U-P.com. And uh, I'd be happy to help you find your own great place in Tampa Bay. If you want to tell us how horrible or how awesome the show is, please go to our website, greatthingstv.com. Click on the gate social link at the top and uh, join our discussion group there. We can interact a little bit. You can also call and leave us a voicemail. Uh, give us some suggestions or some reviews. Maybe you just want to vent, want to talk about uh, recent restaurant experience, just give us a call, 727-440-4455. I promise I won't pick up an answer to that. That's strictly voicemail. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play, and we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>